Brought to you by a paid advertisement for Tailspire. Hey, uh, I know I said we'd talk Dice Ghost, and, and, and we will, Whedon. But, to be honest, I need an easy video. We're working on a few videos. One that comes with a homebrew one-shot. Another great video about building long-term groups that I'm excited about. I've got a shocking grass script, which is in the works. And I've even got a totally different thing that I've been working on for ages that isn't a D&D thing. It's like... A show. Um, here's some concept art for it. I'm excited about that. Perfect World, Tingston would be voiced by George Goodell. And uh, Charlize would be voiced by my awesome wife, Alette. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Easy video. Easy video. Uh, here we go. Let me answer a question that I get a lot, or a at least respond to a sort of a question statement that I get a lot. Um, Larry? D&D isn't meant to run this sort of adventure. Obviously, you should be using different types of RPGs that are not D&D. Thanks, Larry. Like Shadowrun. <clears throat> I think that the Shadowrun setting is excellent. Yeah, but what do you think about the system? I'm not drawing a fucking cyberpunk cityscape so that I can fu so that I can I, I can get mad about the rules. Oh shit, it's still on. An easy video. Okay, there are lots of cool RPGs out there, right? And if you want to tell a specific story, sometimes it's better to use a different RPG. Um, so, for instance, like, I wanted to play Blades in the Dark because I wanted to do, like, a heist game. The world building's pretty cool. It takes place in the city of Dunwall. I mean, Duskval. <laughs> anyway, it's a cool game, and I heard about it on um, Dicebreaker, I think. But after reading it cover to cover, I had a really hard time running it. At its core, the game mechanics are great and pretty simple. It's a game about heists and other underworld jobs where the players can spend stress to call flashbacks, which is a really cool thing. So during the heist, when they need to solve a particular problem in advance, say you're at a gate and there are guards there to stop you, you can spend stress to call a scene where where you and the guard were actually cellmates in Dusk Vale Tower a few years back and you saved their ass, right? So then when they see you, uh, they discreetly let you through. As, as I remember it, the whole game is made up of different clocks that progress according to what the players do or what they don't do. And the players are trying to keep some clocks from, from ticking up and others, they're trying to get them to hit midnight. Or as a Duskvalian would call it, the Hour of Pearls. Which brings me to the problem with Blades in the Dark. Uh... The lore is so fucking dense, and it's so wrapped up in the mechanics that it actually makes it hard to play the game. It literally has 12 names for the hours after Twilight. The months also have their own names and are made up of 10 six-day weeks. So, like, just your most basic assumptions turn into something that costs a little bit of mental tax. And then when you get into the actual meat and potatoes of the map, right, the city is made up of all these different districts and they all mean something and they all have their own conflicts and gangs and characters and types of jobs. The energy in the city comes from fucking ghosts or something. Anyway, the, the point is that though the basic systems are pretty neat and interesting, they ask a lot of the DM or, or GM in that case, right? Storyteller, I can't remember what they call it. One of my buddies described Blades in the Dark as one of those Euro games where it has like hundreds of pieces and cards and tokens and maps and shit. But instead of all that stuff, the DM just is the board and all of those pieces and they have to remember everything. So it's a cool game, um, but it's also immensely hard to talk about. And, and to the point where I, I, I look, I've, I've read the book once all the way through, I think twice at this point. Um, and even double checked it a couple times while I was talking about this, but uh, I'm not certain that the mechanical examples I gave are right. <laughs> um, not even to mention getting into the dice, you know. Anyway, there, listen, there are heaps of interesting games. I don't know enough to really even talk about, like um, uh, the Dresden Files is cool, seems cool. Monster of the Week seems cool. The Warhammer and 40K RPGs all seem interesting and like they do really specific things. Cyberpunk is obviously, you know, a big RPG with a big fan base. The Witcher RPG looked cool, although the combat seemed a little like finicky, but I mean, what TTRPG doesn't have finicky combat? Um, <clears throat> 
There's also a super interesting and granular song of Ice and Fire RPG where you build your own house and history in Westeros with like random roles and stuff. And that's like before you make your characters, which I think is cool. So yeah, look, there are heaps of other RPGs out there. There are, there, there are a lot of them and they're great at what they do. And look, I often get criticized, not by people at the table, but by people online for trying to run wilderness survival, gritty realism, horror, a heist, or even a modern game in 5e because that's not the right system. And to a degree, I I'm with you. But here's the rub. You don't know what a system is good at until you play it. And for that reason, if you have a particular story in mind, sometimes it's better to just clumsily jury rig 5e, um, you know, in a way that feels fair to the players and that you, you, you check with them beforehand um, into the story that you want. But that said, look, if you don't have a story in mind and you've got a free weekend, maybe pick up Blades in the Dark or Five Torches Deep or Monster of the Week or Roll for Shoes or Lancer or Shadowrun uh, and give it a shot. See what you like about it. See what you don't. Maybe you're going to switch to a shadow run group. <laughs> Post note, I love Blades in the Dark, and I think you should explore systems other than D&D, but I also think it's a little bit smug and not that helpful to tell somebody midway through a campaign that they should switch systems. And those are just my thoughts on it. A few of which I, I did steal the word smug from Matt Colville. Great minds, am I right? You should watch this video, though. It's very different. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching this animated spellbook brought to you by paid advertisement for Tailspire. Tailspire is my favorite VTT. It's the only way that I play D&D online and it doesn't handle systems, but it does handle maps, miniatures, map building and movement better than any other VTT on the market in my opinion. It's finally in early access on Steam, so you can buy it through a link in the description.